Let's learn CSS in the next few minutes. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. It is a sheet that is used to create or to determine the look and feel of a website or of a web page. So let's get right into it. Open a VS Code or any code editor that you have. So create a, a file. In this case, I'm creating index.html. Okay, so just put a boilerplate right there, then give it a the title. So with CSS, you can determine how this page is going to look or whatever content that you have within the page. Uh, so, as you can see, learn essential CSS. Okay, so um, the the header, um, the heading that I have, is essential CSS. So I want to determine how it's going to look. So this is what it looks like currently. It's just a plain text. Okay, so you can implement CSS with internal uh, CSS. So that means that you write the CSS code within the within the tag. Okay, in this case, the H1 tag. So we are determining the color as blue and the font size, we give it a, a name. I mean, we'll give it a value, as you can see. So, but there's a problem with that. The other H1 that I have here will not be affected by that CSS I wrote within that inline, ta inline uh, CSS. That's a problem with inline CSS. So another way you can do it is to use internal CSS, where you write it within a style tag. Okay, so if, as you can see, so H1, then color blue. So you see that it affects both of them. Okay, so this is one good thing with internal CSS. But the problem with this one is that it cannot be, it cannot affect any other page. For example, if you have a, a different page now, this will not affect it. So internal CSS can only affect the code or the uh, the page that it lives in. Okay, it cannot be extended to another page. Okay, so so you can see the various uh, implementation I'm putting on this one. As you can see, it changes that. But there's a problem with that. So we want to create a, a more like a generic uh, CSS. So that one is an external CSS where we create a, a file, give it a name, .css. Okay, I just created one now. So as you can see, style.css lives in a different file. I mean, the code here lives in a different file. That same thing is what we have done. So you see that uh, the fact that you have written that doesn't mean that it's going to work. You need to add it to the current page or the page you want to implement it. So what you do, you just uh, go to link uh, REL style and you link it to it that you can see that it affects it like that. Okay, so we have a body. Let's uh, try to style it now. So we have a body tag, then background color is that it gives a uh, pink to the color as you can see right here. Let me remove this ones. So as you can see, so um, then I create another, I create another um, container or a div. Okay, so I've just determined the width of that div as uh, 200, then high 200, then border color, 2px solid, then give it a color of the border. Not your border color, border. Okay, so as you can see, so here, we can also give it a background color. See that this background color, this one is different from the, the main background, which is pink. Let me remove that. Okay, so that is what you have there. So you can determine the radius, the corners, make it a little bit rounded. Okay, so as you can see, so that is somewhat bold now. Okay, so that determines the, so if you want to make it perfect, I could make it 360, uh, but there's a, a shorter way of doing that by using 50%, as you can see. Okay, so, all right, so the, the more percentage, I mean, the more number you give it, the more uh, rounded it's going to be. Okay, so we can also uh, deal with uh, font size, like uh, as we've seen before. So we deal with uh, font now. Font family can also be implemented, as you can see, it's different from the original one or the default one. So you can determine font um, alignment, then padding of uh, that con of that uh, element, then um, then font transform. Let's make it uh, uppercase. You can see, you can also make it lowercase like that. So this is determined by CSS. Okay, so you can see it can also be capitalized. All right. So then you can use the uh, other things like font uh, style. You can see oblique, more like it italics. Same thing, the same implementation. So can, of course the default is normal, so as you can see. All right, so now that we've done that, so the other things we can actually do, let me just move that off, so I can determine other things. Then, then font shadow, you can put a shadow on that font that you just created, okay? On the text, so uh, text shadow, then give it a color, then you give it the various uh, angles, okay? It's top right, bottom angles, as you can see. So let me change that color to something else. Okay, so um, give it some kind of blue color right here. So as you can see, you can see the shadow underneath the text. 
Okay, as you can see right here. Okay, so as you can see, so these are done by CSS. Then uh, for the body, you can give a gradient uh, background instead of just plain background like pink. So let's give it pink and uh, magenta. So you see how it is more or less shaded to one side. Okay, so and these are all CSS, uh, the job of CSS. Uh, so as you can see, it looks, it looks cool. Okay, so, okay, so that's what you have there. Then you can also put a background, a background uh, image on a, on your website, on the web page. So we link it to it. So just put the image there, create the images folder, then put the various uh, image that you want to use. I have one BG, so you can see that beautiful city. Okay, so you see that beautiful city right there. All right, so then you can determine other things in an image for example whether it's going to repeat this number but this may not show because this is a big image so it may not be able to show uh, whether it's repeating or not but if you have a small image of course because i want to make this video very short as much to be as short as possible then for the h1 that we had earlier you can deal with any element using its name or using a class name or an id so if you are dealing with a class as you can see, if you are dealing with a class, then you have to call it with a dot. For example, if you say class H1, we have to say dot H1, then give you whatever color you want to give, just like, as you can see, whatever implementation you want to do on it. Okay, so as you can see, so, uh, okay, so as you can see, um, this one does not affect any other H1. This is specifically for the class, I mean, the element that has H1 as its class. Okay, so uh, that's H1. I should say. Okay, so that's what you have uh, right there. Then you can also have an ID. So if, if it is an ID, remember if it's a class, you call it with a, you you more or less look for it, if you like, with a dot. But if it's, a, if it's an ID, use the hashtag to locate it, as you can see. Okay, so use an ID. Then one thing with ID is that ID takes higher precedence over a class. So as you can see now that the class and ID you see that the ID takes higher precedent. It's taking the the color of the ID instead of that of a, a class. But if you want to override that, you have to use the important uh, word there. Use the exclamation there, important. So important will override whatever you have before that, or even after it. All right. So that's what you are. So let's say you can uh, how you can work on an image using CSS. So I've just added an image. It's same image, but I want to work on the with the image should look so just um uh, style it right there so make it with 200 px as you can see it lives without it lives within that tag so make it uh, um 80 percent then border with the also i'm going to make it a perfect circle just like that. you can see so if you're making a perfect circle the width of the image must be the same thing as the height so um, let's make it 200 by 200 to be a square so you can see that it fits perfectly within there. So that is the way you do that. So let's maybe remove that so you can see how, how cool it looks. So that is the power of CSS. Okay, so, all right, so let's remove that. Let's go to something else. So now let's put, uh, let's see how we can uh, uh, place an image, uh, more or less wrap it around. And then before then, let's see how we can use uh, Google Fonts. Okay, let's see how we can use uh, Google Fonts on our, Okay, so let's look for which one should we use? Uh, okay, let's use this one. So the non the nano uh, gothic. Okay, so you go to the right right here. So know that you have to go to font.google.com. So just locate here. Then there are ways to two ways to do it. Pick I'm picking the one for uh, CSS. So you go to CSS. Go to the top of the page of the, the line. The first uh, first line. Just import it there. Then you go back and pick the what, what you want to use to implement it. I mean, to uh, the specific one. Okay, so I'm putting it within the session. So remove the. I mean, use the pop king. So you can see how it's very dark. It's very bold. Remove that one. Use the gothic. So you see that it's light. I'm going to use this one. So this, this looks uh, better for the case I'm working on. I mean, for this example. So make it that so you can see how clean it looks. So you can use it. This one will be specifically for the session to not affect any of that on the page. So you can also use something like a letter spacing. Then you can use um, 
Uh, just give it, uh, so you can see, so letter spacing 1 px, you can use 0 0.5 and so on. So, of course, you, you may not need it, but it's something I can use. You can also use line height. This is going to be, see how everything is standing on top of each other, basically. So, all right, so like line height, make it uh, uh, 558, but that's not necessary. But of course, if you want to do that, you can do that. The word spacing is also there. In terms of font, I mean, in terms of text, you can see that individual word has space in between them. Okay, so that's all. Okay, so now let's go back to that image. Let's put an image within the C the session. So let me put this particular form there. So you see that it's taking uh, the image of, I mean, it's taking the implementation of what I used before the IMG. So that would be generic. So I'm going to hide it now, make it separated by using the D before the image. Okay, so now. I will come to this place. So I now say session image. So this one will not be specifically for that image that, within, that is within the session. Okay, so that is the syntax. The element, the open and close uh, curly bracket and put whatever it is you want to do there, so as you can see. So then you can float it to the left. So you can see how it is now. It practically being wrapped somehow by the text. Then of course you can also float it to the right and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me make it, uh, make, uh, okay. Okay, I think that should be okay. So you can put a margin on it so that to push it a little, a little bit away from the text, as you can see. So if you look at it, then you can see that there's a space around it. Okay, so that's what you can do there by just using the float, then and the value, float attribute and the value. Okay, so now you have a, a border that is for the run. So just to put the border on the on the session. So I can actually see. So we can put use things like margin and padding. So margin is an external uh, spacing. So you can see that between the between this element and the body, you can see the space between uh, is round it basically. So margin you have top right, bottom left. So you can see that it, it puts the margin on the left. So then you can also use uh, that of a top. So it pushes it from the top. They can use the right and so on and so forth. So as you can see, so you see that it pushes it that way too. All right, but if you just use margin to be surrounding, to be top, right, bottom, and left. Okay, so let's look it back to that one. So as you can see, so also have pad, uh, padding. So your padding also takes this, the, uh, okay, uh, let's leave it for the top. So the idea is top, like I said, top, right, bottom, and uh, left. So you can put everything together by just use 45, that is for the top, zero for the right, 50 px for the uh, bottom and zero for the left. So as you can see, right there. So it depends on what you want to do. Okay. So if then, like I said, this is an external spacing. That is for the margin. Then padding is an internal spacing. So padding, uh, if you look at it, I can see that there's a space between that's within it, between that uh, the border and the content that is within the the style. I'm uh, not the style. The session. Sorry. All right, so then we have more like a global, like a global um, implementation of CSS. So if you use start then open and close, so that will more, that is more like all elements that are with uh, that are within the page or that is it affair. That is whatever you use this uh, this CSS. So that start there means everything, every element will have that. So you can see that it joins the wall at the left basically. Okay, so that is basically what that is right there. Okay, so let's make that as left. So you can see that uh, padding left is there, 45 px. Then right, see that it's at the right. Then if you, just like that of margin, it, it has this top, uh, right, bottom, left. So that's basically what you have, okay, right there. With CSS, you can do a whole lot of things. Okay, so, all right, I, I think that settles that part. So if you just put, uh, Padding for the five, that would be the entire thing. That's top, right, bottom, and left. Okay, so after that, so let's add uh, an image. Let's see how we can make an image stay still so that even if you scroll the image, I mean, to scroll the page, the image will remain where it is. So you can see where it is now. Okay, so add that image right there. So so I'm giving it, I'm using hash phone now because that's the, I gave it an idea. So that's why I am trying, to, I'm calling it from CSS. With hash, so I want to take it to the right. I want this image to be at the right. So what I need to do is um, um, first let's use display. No, you can't see that. That's not for the right. I just brought that. So display no has so many. Display has so many things like block, 
uh, inline and inline block. So we don't want the image to, to show use display no. Okay, so let's make it display block. So we'll give an ID to each of them, ID one, uh, four, one, two, three. So I'm going to use that ID to affect uh, all of them. So we can also group IDs like this, that is hard. Uh, whether class or whatever, you can also, I mean, or ID or even the uh, element can use one, uh, you can put it in kind of shorthand like this. So you just separate them with comma, that is hash from one, from two, from three, with hash before it. So having comma separated them, so you are going to deal with all of them with a single code or a single block of code, I should say. Okay, so we have that. Then for that uh, three, uh, then or two, so I'm going to make that display absolute. It's actually lost now. It's nowhere to be found. Now, if you say right, then it's going to write zero. You see that it's at the extreme right, because that is the zeroth position at the right. Then, then if you say position fixed, you see that even if you scroll, it stays still, it doesn't move. Okay, so that is basically what you have on that one. Okay, so if you want to make it stay still, just use the position fixed. Okay, so as you can see, that one is there. Okay, so you also have this one then, um, very similar to what we did before. So like I said, you can float it to the right, can also float it to the left. Do, do something, okay, we did something like this a minute ago or a moment ago. So you can use all this uh, implementation to determine the height. So if you make anything, any element, imagine auto is going to put it at the middle, as you can see. Then determine the height, I mean the width, the border, we've gone through this before. But I just want to revisit this. So if you say padding, uh, whatever would you give, you see that it surrounds that, just like you can see. Okay, so um, then you see that we are floating any image that is within it to the right. So as you can see, see margin, so see how it is. Then if you use margin like this, it's going to override the previous margin. So that's why you have to use top, bottom, and all that. So as you can see what we have here. Okay, so float to the right, then go to the right. No, we have done the one for to float to the left. Of course, you can also float to the right as uh, left as you can see. So um, that is the power of CSS. They can put a margin on it, that's just like we did before. Okay, so then you have that the border and the rest. You can do all those things, like you, as you can see here. All right. So uh, I think that does that so far for this. Then let me just change the videos picture instead of them to be one. So let's change the pictures. Okay, so as you can see here, so the we have session image. See that I've made them to be a position absolute. So they practically are on top of each other. They are stuck on top of each other. So let me uh, just, uh, let's give it a height of 100 px. That is for the container, which is the, um, okay, that's too small. Let's give it 300. Okay, so for the container, which is the session, Oh, that is housing all the uh, three images, as you can see. All right, so now, the last one will be the one to take precedent uh, to be on top. As you can see, if I move this one, I see that it's on top. If I move that one back, see that the other one, the phone will be on top. Now, but you can actually determine the one that should, that is the logo, the BG, and the phone. So we see, I say, you can actually determine where it should stay. So if I say logo now, which is not the uh, the last, you know, the the the, um, the phone was at the last, so you see that by using Z index, by, by default, all elements are at zero position. So if you use Z index one or more, it's going to be on top of whatever is at zero, just like you can see. All right, so then the BG, if you make it two, it will now be on top of that, uh, the one that is one, and so on and so forth. So that's what you can use Z, uh, Z index for. All right, so that what we're going to do Let's see how we can do positioning. How we can position elements. So you can put some at the right, put some at the left, put some at the middle, put some at the bottom and so on and so forth. So the phone, let the phone be at the right. Now the reason why it is out of this, out of this radar, that is the session, is because uh, if you use anything absolute, then you have to make sure that the parent element will be relative, so like this. Okay, so um, the parent uh, must be uh, relative Otherwise, if you make anything else, it's going to get out of, or it's likely going to get out of the radar, okay, of such elements. So as you can see, so you have to make a dependent uh, uh, element position relative, so they can make uh, uh, the other ones um, absolute. Then you'll be able to stay within that box. 
All right, so just say right zero, bottom zero. I mean left zero, bottom zero. So, so if you make it right zero now, so you can see that it's at that place, then right and left zero. So if you want this thing to be at the middle, just say right, left, zero, and uh, then you, you make it uh, imagine auto. That automatically drags it at the middle. Then that of the logo, make it bottom zero, as you can see. Then for the other one, the uh, BG, you can see, um, you can see um, that the ones will be at the at the right, at the bottom right. So you just say right zero, then bottom zero. So it's going to stay at that place. Okay. So that's basically what you have right there. Okay. So um, let's work with uh, list. Let's work with um, um, uh, uh, list. So we we'll have a. Uh, a section with a div inside then you have the width and the height we've gone through this before so one this um we have three divs divs within it okay so we have three divs uh, within it so those div will contain certain uh, write up not a list pass uh, not a list actually uh we'll see how we can work with um, certain elements where we can Determine how they look based on the content. I mean, the, based on their container. So let's give this uh, surrounding red. That's the border red. Border uh, color red. Then let's display the inline. So here now, this is helping us with our layout. So if you make something, uh, if if element is block, it's going to stay on top of. They're going to stay on top of each other. Okay, so now if if uh, you want to make sure that they don't say on top of each other, they stay at the right or by the side, you have to use it, uh, implement it, uh, or give it display in line block. Then this is more or less like combination. So if you use combination, like here, and I see that all elements that are within the session, the, uh, when you use up um, plus div, so the first div that it encounters outside will be. Um, will have the implementation. But if you use the T dot uh, the T sign and div, all the div outside of it, that's that means all the the children outside of it will be having that. So here now, since I use div, you can see that I use T div, but if I use um style, I mean if I use span with that, it will not show anything because it's not any sibling. It's not a sibling. So if I use plus, so as you can see so it doesn't have anything to do with that. Then, but if I use um, session tilde, so you see that it affects the first span. But if I use uh, something, it doesn't support something like this. It doesn't support something like this. So then, of course, I have to use command to separate them. You have to put the session by it. Okay, so session, so you are saying that any, any div or any span that is outside of that, should have that effect. So this is what we have right there. So you can determine how they look. I mean, how where they're going to stay. You can put the margin by them. You can take them to the top, to the right, and whatever. Okay, that does that. So let's see how we can work with um, a little menu. Let's create a small menu right there. So put a nav. Then on the nav, give it the background color so I can see identify it. Then you have that. Then uh, nav has a ul. Then ul has the li. Then li has uh, the a tag or the anchor tag. So we're going to display it, display inline block so that they will stay on, uh, stay side by side instead of on top of each other because li is a block level element. Okay, so let's put the padding on the, on the, uh, on the anchor tags. So as you can see, so let's decorate, make the duration known so I can see it clean like you can, as, as it is. Okay, then the, the um, nav, NAV, UL, LI, and A. So we are trying to target those, uh, I mean, the A tag within it. So as you can see, as I put my mouse on it, it shows that. Now this hover is a, a pseudo class. Okay, so um, so that's what it does there. We're going to see more of it as we get along. Then let's how we can make uh, some kind of drop down in this menu. Okay, so in this menu bar, so we just uh, put the various uh, um, the, the various uh, items in the in the drop down. 
So here we have a product. We are going to put a ma your ma our mouse on the product later. Then it shows us the uh, what is hidden within it, as you can see. So phone, laptop, television, and and the microphone will not show until you put your mouse on that element. Moving forward, okay. So um, that is what we have. So like I said, a column hover. That hover there is a pseudo class. Right, so we are going to see how we can hide those uh, that one. So we are going to surround this those items with something, okay, with an element. So what we we'll do, uh, have to surround this one, put it within the uh, li. So here, on the li, so we we'll just have uh, this. Then we need to surround those items in a span. We can use any any, any other element. But let let me just use span for that. Then this is how it looks if you don't work around this. So what we do now do is that on this line 33, so let's go ahead on 38 to say hover span. It's like I have to remove, make it that it doesn't display. As you can see, you see that if you put your mouse on it, it displays it like this. Okay, so that is what you have in that place. We actually don't need this one. Let's remove that. So um, basically, that's what you have right there. Okay, so I'm trying to make this video very fast. So you could uh, maybe you can uh, view it in a slower motion if it is too fast. Okay, so let's work with uh, list and list items. Basically, list where you can do something like uh, number so many things. Like okay, let's let's put a padding on this. So I can come forward. So let's say um, let's say padding for five px. So you can see that you can auto uh, number it or auto give it uh, um identification so you can see upper alpha that's lean style upper alpha so these ones are done with css so then lower roma then you can also have upper roma okay as you can see right there so you can, all right so now you can also have that of latin of course some may not be supported uh, with your browser so you can use uh, images as you can see so these are images that i just designed before now so i can also put custom image right there all right, so the next thing we want to do, let's see how we can work with uh, other areas, other things with uh, CSS. So let's create a div, give it height and width 200 px, or width and height 200 px, give it a background color, the blue violet. Okay, so now that we've done that, so what we need to do is we want to use do a, a pseudo element, how you can create other elements. I mean, create any element within CSS instead of you using the normal HTML tag. So we're going to create two more elements within this div by using the before and after um, pseudo elements. Okay, so uh, the pseudo element will have double colon before, before, or uh, after. Okay, as you can see, so we are saying that before it, you have a content display block, then width and height, then the color for the before and after, as you can see. So the before comes first, then the after comes after the before, just like it looks. Then if you don't put anything, the content, uh, there must be a content. If you have no content, it won't do anything. It won't show forth, okay? So that we have to also make a display of block, of inline block, so as you can see. So that content is important. You have to put content, even if you don't have any to type inside. If you just use content, then put a double quote or single quote, they will not display, I mean, that's the only way it would display. Then let's give, let's give this one a color. Let's give this one that color. So you can see that the before has the border reduce of uh, two, I mean of uh, uh, 50%. Okay, all right, so that is what you have. So let's see how we can work with uh, basic animation. Okay, let's see how we can work with basic animation. So um, we create uh, div, uh, one div, then put uh, some, sp uh, let put a span inside. So as you can see, okay, so we have a dark background, then we have a blue violet in the have a blue violet in the uh, uh for the uh, span. Then I don't need to talk about all this uh, position and the rest. 
But what is important is this one is the animation. So to do this animation, we we'll use keyframes, then we we'll give it a name, we are calling it animate span. Then we are saying that from uh, uh, zero position, let it be at the left. Then uh, from that, as you go at the right, to the right as uh, uh, to go to the right at zero position two. Okay, so remember that it is uh, the uh, position absolute. Then you have to call use the animation and call the name that you gave it, or that you it will not uh, it will not work. Okay, so the timing is five seconds. You can see. So I jump from left to right, left to right, and like that. Now that I have infinite, so which one is going to continue to do it? So uh, five was too slow, then dot five seconds is uh, faster. So you can use, can just play with the numbers. Then we don't want to just jump from left to right. We want it to have some level of, some kind of stop in between. So 50% to the left, so you can see that it stops at the middle right there. So let's use uh, percentage, so you can see how fast it is to move from left to right. Then you can also go to top, uh, to bottom, so as you can see. So how it goes from top to bottom. Then you have, uh, you can also put another stop there. Maybe let's, now we now have about four. You have 0, 25, uh, 50. You can see how it moves. Okay, you, can, you can further uh, make that faster by changing the number. Like I said, just play with the numbers. Okay, let's have another stop as 55, uh, 75%. So left should be this. So you can see how it moves from one point to the other. Note that it doesn't, notice that it doesn't go out of that box because we use the percent, uh, position relative. So you can also change the color while it's, while it's moving. Okay, so you can then make it alternate. It goes from uh, right to left and it goes left to right to alternate the movement. Okay, so that's what you have right there. Okay, then you can also change the color as you can see. So it looks beautiful. All right, so I think that does that. So let's see how we can work with tables. Okay, so table, easy to work around. So just put the HTML tag. This is not the HTML video, but a CSS video. So here we just change the videos. Uh, as you can see, the videos color, the background color, the, the line color, and so on, the border color, as you can see. So if you are still here, thank you for sticking around. We're almost done with the video. I'm just trying to make it fast, as, as fast as possible. So the video will not be too long. So this is what you have there. Okay, so many people are very impatient these days. Not, they don't like long videos. Okay, so let's see how we can work with responsive design. Okay, so responsive design. So create, uh, uh, we'll have uh, some um, uh, some divs, or some containers. So you can have content one, two, three, right there. So they're in divs. So I'm using a grid. Um, uh, we are using the CSS grid to determine how they are positioned. And of course, they will be responsive. So you can see that grid container and you also have a flex container, as you can see right here. So for the flex container, we just have, they see that they are very similar. So you can see, all right. I already have a video for uh, flex and, uh, and, and grid. So I'll link them in the description of this video. You can go watch that. All right, so this is just like introduction to CSS. Okay, so that's what you have there. So, um, so that's basically what you have so far regarding um, uh, that uh, responsive design. That's for the for the um, for the flex and and grid. CSS grid. So let's see more like a manual responsive designer. Huh? So have um, session div. So this session div. We have uh, one session then uh, divs inside. So we are going to say that, okay, each of the div will have 25%, as you can see. So I just make it 24%, as you can see. So um, so when it's on a big screen, all of them will display like this. So if you look at it, now you see that they are displaying. So let's see that if you have, if you are in a smaller screen, you know, like a mobile phone, let it more or less collapse or stay on top of each other at some point. Then of course, if it is a big screen, let it also uh, stay properly. So as you can see, okay, let's see how this one should uh, be weight of, uh, let's give it 48%. It will have two, as you can see. Let's work on the height. The height is so much, 200 px. Then uh, let's make the bottom of that. So as you can see, so you see that on a small screen, it's two, it, it presents two. On a bigger screen, it presents three or four, like that. So you can say mass width, and give the number that you want. 
most of the most phones are about 400, 300, and 300 or something, and 400 or something, and so on. Okay, so you can also put background color as you, as uh, it's changing, as you can see here. So you can see, so that's basically what you have here. And thank you for sticking around. Don't forget to come back and watch other videos. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.